music now. Let's go. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Am I On Speaker with Kylie and Callie. Today we bring you here to talk about the woman's Bible. This, is this book will save your life. I love it. It's like the only full book I've ever read in my entire life. Don't let the name fool you. It does sound a little off-putting. It's called Why Men Love Bitches, but it really has some good life advice. It doesn't only it does. help you with relationships. It helps you with friendships. It helps you with your life skills and Everything. not depleting yourself and giving away yourself to people and having some boundaries and yeah, people Just respect basically you. basically being a boss ass bitch. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I love it. Do you have like any like um, things you like to live by? Yeah, in so this there book? was, okay, so I took notes on, cause I read this like, what, two years ago? So like, I kind of had to like skim through it again, but attraction principle number 14, I actually watched um, a video of the author talking about this certain principle and she was like, I, you have to live by this because like there's men out there that are horrible. And boys. It's fine. <laughs> there are and great men, men and there's boys. <laughs> but it says if you smother him, he'll go into defense mode and look for an escape route to protect his freedom, which is also for women and men. Yes. So like if you like rush towards or anybody like anything you run, you yeah. chase after will run. And that's basically being a bitch is like. Because there's a nice girl and there's a bitch. So there's book. the doormat and the dream girl. So you're basically striving to be the dream girl. Yep. So when she says like, oh, don't chase things, they'll run. Um, so for example, the nice girl gives until she's depleted. The bitch is kind yet strong. She stands up for herself when a man oversteps the line. So basically like... If you don't want to, like if a guy does something and you're upset about it, don't be like, I don't want to say anything because I don't want to be crazy. Yeah. Be crazy. Don't be like psychotic. But, but just stand your ground. Like, Right. And like, I don't even know how to put it into words other than that. Like that's perfectly worded right there. Like and I love it. Silence speaks louder than words. Like if you I don't, agree. if you express something to your partner and say, hey, this bothers me, you don't have to keep repeating yourself yeah. nagging nagging you just say it once mm -hmm. and you step back and you let them think about what they've just done yeah. your silence speaks volumes i agree and it gives them time to sit there and like fester and think wow what, how, what is she thinking but if you're sitting there nagging him the whole time like this bothers me because yeah. of this and trying to get emotional and he's gonna be like all right i'm annoyed and he's gonna check out especially in the beginning like when you're first starting to talk to someone like they don't want someone to just be there like nagging, like trying to force yourself into relationships and stuff like that. Because, I mean, nobody wants that in general. Um, right. So like, I feel like there's so many like key points in this book that just show that being a woman is also like, you just have to think a little bit more in a man's perspective. Right. Because there's this, so when she wrote this book, um, she interviewed a hundred men. I saw that, yes. Yeah, in order to like get feedback and like get into the brains of the men, which is crazy, which is so smart. I love her for that. I want to read the next one too, by the way. Why Men Marry Bitches. Oh, I saw that too. I'm I haven't read, read it. Next, but yeah, today we're talking about this one, but I'm so excited to read that one. Um, so yeah, she interviews these uh, men and she asks them, she tells them the title of the book. Most of them chuckle mm -hmm. and most of them look and like their deepest secret was revealed like some yeah. of them were like damn that's right and some of them were like uh-uh like that's, mm -mm, that's yeah not me yeah all right and you know <laughs> there are some of you that are probably looking at this and going like this cannot pertain yeah. to my life like i'm different you know none of this could be me this is just a guide mm -hmm. to get through a hard time and i was in a really shitty relationship three years four years ago and I lived with a guy, and if I would have had this, I would have... Yeah, immediately. It would have answered all of my questions, all of the nights, I sleepless yep. nights, or all the mornings I'd get up super early just stressed about things I shouldn't have when this has all the answers. This is definitely the best book to read when you're, like, going through a breakup. Like, 
something hard that you're going through, you read this book and you feel like a bad bitch. And it like, empowers you. I love it. I'm not even like, I don't like to read yeah. really. But this, like it keeps you engaged. It keeps you mm -hmm. entertained. It almost like attacks you because mm -hmm. it calls you out on some shit. Yeah, like, I like that. So another thing it says in here is the bitch, um, she's flowery on the outside and she's steel on the inside. So anything mm -hmm. you say, hey, if you ever did this, I'm not going to be cool with it. Stand your ground. Exactly. Never go back on that because they're going to lose respect. For you. Yeah, that's why like when someone cheats on you and you go back to them, it's like they're like, oh, she forgave me. Still does it again. Like you're a joke. cheaters are cheaters and they're, that's just how And you're gonna now be. a joke. Exactly. Now you look like a dumb bitch. And if this, we're not here to like attack men. We, there's some great men, yeah. you know. That's what I'm saying. It goes for both sides. Like we have different brains obviously, but like it's remotely the same. Like you can get into a woman's brain and get into a man's brain. Right. Like opposite. And I don't know. You just need to study it. Right. And the bitch, she um, doesn't take advantage of men. She plays fair. And if they're going to treat you some way, don't go above and beyond. Don't do the most, especially when you first start dating a guy. Do not cook him a four course meal. Exactly. Do not do the most until there's a ring on your finger or you're getting some nice gifts or something because exactly. he needs to prove to you that he chose you because a man has to choose a woman. Like mm -hmm. he has to feel like he chose. And I know that sounds like fucked up for people that are like, females obviously but like obviously we choose the man as well but men deep down want to feel like they they chose you yeah and i watched this um it was like a interview of the author and she was talking about how like men are like hunters like they naturally like like to hunt so they don't want something coming to them they want they want the like endorphins from like yes like chasing after someone so they give an example in the book mm -hmm. of like uh like there's a a lion yeah. and there's like a gazelle or whatever they eat. Yeah. A zebra, who, whatever it is, <laughs> running through the... Um, the wilderness. The wilderness. <laughs> and the lion sees a wounded zebra oh, on the other side. Mm -hmm. He sees one running. That lion is going to run after yeah. the one that he needs to like. Because yeah. they're... That's, that's like so a natural. Hunt, their instinct is like exactly. to hunt and men have that same instinct to hunt and it goes back to the beginning of time men are supposed to be the hunters, the hunters yeah exactly so you do not make their lives easy make them work for it i know it's hard sometimes when you really care about a guy and you think man i just want to show him how much i yeah. love him and i'm not going to go anywhere it's just easier in the beginning to like just like let go whatever right but like in the long run if you want to be with this man you need to show you to him your game. boundaries. Mm -hmm. You need to think about long term, not, oh, I'm so in love right now. That's great. Yeah. But like show him, set yourself up for the future. Exactly. Set yourself up so you're not suffering later. Yeah. Do, keep the relationship exciting. Keep, don't show him everything right away. Mm -hmm. He'll take, he'll take, he'll take it he'll all. Take. And then yeah. later on, you won't have anything left to give. Mm -hmm. You won't. Yeah, I agree. I've definitely fallen in those traps multiple times. <laughs> Everyone knows it. But like talking about this too and like reading the book, it like kind of like gives me like a refreshment on like the first time I read this. Yeah. Because I can read this book like 12 times. Right. Well, it's so easy to read. A lot of my friends, like yeah. when they're going through relationship advice, I'm like, I have to get you this book. Yeah. And like sometimes I did I'll... that with my mom. <laughs> and she. She's so funny. She like. So she has a boyfriend and she like ripped the cover off of it so that he wouldn't see it. <laughs> he wouldn't see what the book was called. My dad funny. makes fun of me all the time because of this book. He's like, what the fuck is that? It's kind of like awkward because I like one time I read it in um, like a little coffee shop and I was just sitting there like this. Like trying to hide the cover. You're like, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, not a psychopath, I swear. But it's the best book ever. Like if you know, you know. I love it. So another thing men find really attractive is when you have your own hobbies. Mm -hmm. A life a life, passionate interests of your own, mm -hmm. um, things that you enjoy. Don't stop everything you enjoy to, you know, accommodate for him. Yeah. Do things that you love. Um, I know you want to spend time and stuff because quality time is very important, but like 
do not cut things off that are important to you for a man. Yeah. He will accommodate to you. He will make it happen. Um, so that's that. And it's really unattractive when you're that girl and your man's busy doing whatever. Yeah. Uh, playing Just, video yeah. games. Your man shouldn't Anything. be playing video games. But I mean, no they judgment. Do. <laughs> but they do that. Yeah. Anyway. Um, like they have their own life. Right. They have their own hobbies. Video yeah. games, whether they're outside doing yard work or whatever. And if you're just like the nice girl, the doormat will sit there. Yeah. And wait. Bored out of her mind. Twiddle. I know someone like that too. Same. She'll just sit there and then. Yeah. Twiddle her thumbs yeah. and just wait until it's convenient for okay. the guy to like. And then yeah. you're just bored out of That's your mind. Horrible. And you're that... waiting there and you're like, okay, when is he going to want to hang out? And yeah. it's like, no, get up. Go do what you want to do. And when he's free and you're free, you guys can hang, hang out, out together because mm -hmm. he's going to find that super unattractive that you're like willing to give up your Plus, he's sanity gonna, for like that. there's other sides to it. Like he he could get used to it, too, of you being around all the time and then get mad if you actually want to go do something with your life. Right. And there are guys like to that, too. They're going to be like, well, that's weird that she doesn't want to just hang out here. Like That's what she usually does. Which and then red starts, flag starts to become controlling. Like there's just like two sides to things from like, the beginning set it up set your boundaries do what you have to do exactly from the very beginning is it's it's easier to give in like i said but like it's just so much easier in the long run to just play the long game not wait it and wait it out and people think like oh you know it's i'm not pretty enough or mm -hmm. i don't have a good enough job or i don't it has nothing to do with that you could work at taco bell or be the president and yeah. a man will respect you based on your confidence oh, yeah. and the way that. you hold yourself. Yep. Um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you do. It Look doesn't matter. Like exactly. Looks only get you so far. Confidence is literally the most attractive thing, even to women. Like, to women, uh, looking at a man and he has confidence is like, yeah. he's out there. Like, he's, right. he's perfect. I mm. love that. Right. And the same goes for women. Like, nobody wants someone who's insecure or like... Be sure of yourself. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, like. You only have yourself. Yeah. So invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. Do what you have to do, whether that's like going to the gym or yoga, meditating. Do. Invest in your mental health, in your physical health, in all the things that are going to make you thrive. Because at the end of the day, you only have yourself. Yes. And that's going to attract the most beautiful type of person into your life and the most fitting type of person because that you want somebody that's going to match your energy and you guys are just going to keep pushing each other to be better and you don't want to be stagnant you don't want to be okay with them being the bare minimum you want them to push you and you want to push them exactly there's also a point in the book where she said that she's aware of her femininity but does not see it as weakness yeah which is like basically the whole point of the book too like she's a feminine girl, but it's not considered weakness at the end of the day. Like that's that's the doormat. That's the doormat. <laughs> right. Like, I don't know. And there's nothing wrong with being like you you can be independent and still be feminine. Yeah. Like you can be a boss bitch and still be feminine. You still want to keep that girly side. You still want to Yeah. Not exactly take care of me financially, because obviously that could be like a mm -hmm. thing too, but like you want to hold your own in some way. Yeah. Whether that's like being feminine is powerful, you know, and that's important to a man. And there's and dark femininity and and light. So I, I used to like study those things and like it's good to have a balance of both. Right. I think like because it's good to be feminine. It's good to be light feminine. It's good to be dark feminine. But like at the end of you the day, you can go back you balance and forth. Them. Yeah. Because yeah. it's it's bad when there's too much of each side right like if you're like leaning towards one side or the other side well we come here to tell you all this advice because we have been through some shit ourselves yeah um i've gone back to this book so many times i've mm -hmm. highlighted stuff i've you know just having to remind myself it's who just the fun fuck to read, I am. honestly too like it's nothing serious and people like look at the book and they're like what are you reading but at the end of the day like and it's not about playing games you yeah. don't have to play games it's about learning to respect yourself mm -hmm. and learning to keep things fresh and exciting and i agree um you know i lived with the guy for two years and i did i'm so guilty of like 
I was so ready to be in like this perfect relationship and like settle down and just be this perfect little housewife. Yeah. So, you know, I would cook, I would do all the things and he got so bored of me. Yeah. And I didn't understand why. Like I never understood why I was never enough. Yeah. And I was searching for answers, searching for, it's because I had no respect for myself. Exactly. And I just kept overcompensating because I was like, maybe it's not enough. And I would just do more. And it yeah. was just like, he's like, damn, this girl is really fucking desperate. Yeah. You know? I agree. And that's, I used to be in situations like that all the time. So now like kind of my ego takes over and I, I have this habit of being like, no, like, like, I don't want this. Like trying to like seem like a hard ass, but like at the end of the day, I'm just, you know, like I need to have a little bit more light femininity because I seem like a bitch sometimes. But it's because I try to protect myself. Like, that's your wall. Yeah. Recently, well, I was in a relationship and it was it was horrible. But like, I still was acting like I was so tough and like all these things. But he was horrible to me. And like, yeah, like I, some of the shit he said afterwards. Walk, yeah, terrible. Like, some guys will like be so nice to you. They're the nicest person in the world. And then all of a sudden, afterwards, they treat you. Like they never wanted to be with you in the beginning. It's because so they get comfortable and they know they have a hold on you. Mm-hmm. And you can't let men know they have a hold on you. Yeah. Because then they'll. And don't crash your girlfriend's car and then not pay for it. Period. And yeah, stay <laughs> exactly. away from men that and don't have cars. steal my hoodie and give it to your girlfriend for Christmas. Yeah. Fuck that. Anyways. No, you know. No shade. No but, like, shade. It's just so funny because like men are men will do trash. what they want. They'll do what they want at the end of the day. And you do everything for this guy per se. Yeah. Um, you're gonna turn into his mother. You're gonna. You don't want that because that is mm-hmm. what their moms did for them when they were. You know. And yeah, so I lived with this guy, and he got so comfortable. He was constantly talking to other girls, like. I didn't understand why because I'd see these girls and I'm like, well, they're not me, you know? Mm -hmm. I didn't get it. I was so confused. Yep. And I was like, I'm perfect. Like, I'm such a good girlfriend. Girlfriend. I do all these things and it wasn't enough. And then one morning he would wake up for work and like he always did. And he went down to the garage, opened the garage. And I was Mm -hmm. like, okay, back to bed because I'm not getting up at 5 a.m. And he comes back upstairs and he's like, hey, um, I'm going to the airport. Do you want to give me a ride? And I said, the airport? What the hell are you talking about? And he was like, I'm going to South Dakota for like a job interview. And I was like, no, you can drive yourself to the damn airport. (laughs) Goodbye. Take a taxi. So he did. He had a car. But yeah, no, he just was like, I guess that was his way of telling me. He had known about this for like two weeks and didn't tell me. Known about what? Going on this trip. Okay. So- I called my dad, which I always go to my dad for she does. advice because I love it. this sounds terrible, but he played my mom when they were together. He so did my dad. had though. a relationship with somebody else for seven mm-hmm. years. And that's <laughs> just so he knows how shitty fucking men can be. And he knows their heads and he knows how to. Get, so who do I call my dad? I'm like, he did this. He's like, he's definitely meeting a girl. And I, he's like, do not call him the whole time he's there because he's going to try to like keep you entertained yeah. and her. And I was like, how am I not going to call him? Like, I'm upset. He's like, you're not going to call him. So he goes to South Dakota the whole time he's there. He's like, you're really not going to text me back. And oh. I just wanted to be like, well, you, you know, explain yeah. myself. Fuck no. No contact is the best yeah, I agree. way to go when you're, you know. they're sitting there like. He just did some shitty fucking shit. Yeah. So he gets back uh, four or five days later. Mm-hmm. And he he's on our staircase texting and it's 10 o'clock, three o'clock over there, I think, in the morning. And I'm like, who are you texting? And he's like, my recruiter. And I was like, okay. Played it cool, boiling on the inside. And I go and I look up on my phone all quietly what time it was in South Dakota. No recruiter is texting you at 3 a.m. Yeah. They're sleeping. So... I keep it calm so he doesn't know I'm suspicious. And in the middle of the night, I crawled over to his phone and I opened the phone and I saved this number in my phone and somehow went back to bed. And I was like, I'm what? I don't know how I did it. I was just because I had he had talked to multiple other girls before this. So it was like such a reoccurring thing. I was able to somehow calm myself down. Mm -hmm. And 
<laughs> the Kyrie. next morning, I call this number on star 67. I'm a psycho. No, and she doesn't answer, but it goes to her voicemail. And she's like, hi, this is whatever her name was. Stop. What do I do? Look her up on Facebook. <gasps> and she was in South Dakota. Anyway. Oh, lovely. So That's I locked great. him out of the house for two days. And yeah, and that was good. Did you have Bob then? Oh, yeah, I had Bob. That's my cat. Yeah. Was that when you you moved out and then you left Bob there or something? No, that was a different house. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was when I was a bad cat mom. But Oh, my gosh. Yeah, but men are fucking like, and I put up with that. And how pathetic yeah. of me to like stick around after that. We were, you know, in a lease together, which made it a little bit hard. Um, but I really wanted to be with this guy. I yeah. wanted to make it work. I knew he had like issues. I was mm -hmm. like, you know, he he's going through it. Like he, what the fuck? I know exactly. What the happened. fuck was I thinking? Yeah. Well, I was with this guy one time and like, we were very toxic. It was whatever. Um, and like, I would fly over there all the time, blah, 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 like back and forth. And like, we would get mad at each other. And I don't know. It was like a whole thing. And I found out that he got some girl pregnant when we were together. Hmm. Yeah. So I was just like, oh. He pulled a I, Tristan Thompson. No, literally, I, <laughs> I played it back and I was like counting all the months and I was like, uh-uh. I was like, that is crazy. So now he's like, has three kids or whatever, but like. Go him. Go him. I love him still. So he's great. He's a great guy. I don't love him like that, but he's he's cool. Like you guys are cool. Yeah, we're cool. Yeah, I think I'm cool with my like we're cordial. I'm cool with all my exes. Like if I saw him, it would be fine. Yeah. Like I I don't want to fucking talk to him ever yeah. again. But I I don't hate his guts. Yeah. Like I moved on. Like you go live your life, buddy. I'm team whatever your name is. You know, like yeah. I want you. I want everybody to be happy. Like all my exes, I I'm also, you know, guilty of being a shitty person. <laughs> We all are. It's okay. So, you know, I have a lot of regrets of how I've treated people in the past. And I've mm -hmm. grown a lot because... Maybe it was your karma. I it, He was 100% my karma. Mm -hmm. Because the whole time I was just thinking, man, I was treated so good before this. What was I thinking, you know? And I just took it for granted. So I know a lot of men deal with that. They, like, mm -hmm. have their girl. They get bored. And then... We basically just ruin each other. Like They cheat on their girlfriend. Yeah. And the girl they actually love, mm -hmm. the girl finds out, the girl's done, and they're like, what the fuck have yeah. I done? But exactly, it's fucked up that okay. that's how it is. So yeah. this it, book is not only to help men, I mean women, but it's also to help men. Like you yeah. want your girl to be on her A game and you exactly. want your man to be on his A game. Like you're helping each other. We're just trying yeah. to accommodate. Yeah, <laughs> yes, like get your girl this for Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> I recommend, you know, I, I heard that she's going to come out with a new one that is like, cause this book is kind of old. Like it was like before phones, before social media, it's dated. So it's like very dated, but I think she's making like a newer one with like technology and like texting. Cause when I watched that interview with her, she was talking about how like texting is a big thing nowadays. And like, you shouldn't text unless it's something or something but like she was just like on point with everything and that's why i'm like so in love with her because of this book and like just the way that she words things especially in this book right i want to read why men marry, marry bitches. bitches so, so i don't know if you guys have seen this but i think it's like a pam anderson thing it's on tiktok and she says to get a man to marry her she um tells them i will never marry you and that's that how you get a so man funny. to marry you. So in this book, it says um, attraction principle number 17. If you tell him you're not interested in jumping into a relationship with both feet, he will set out to try to change your mind. They take those yeah. words and do the opposite of yeah. what you want, mm -hmm. which doesn't that make sense with a lot of the things it that does. men do? You mm -hmm. tell them one thing and they do the other. They do so the opposite. reverse psychology. Say, I don't, I'm not ready for a relationship. Yeah. Guess what that motherfucker is going to do? He's going to be like, bet. Honestly, Game yeah. on. <laughs> it's so crazy because I, my brain, I feel like I think like a man at times. Right. So I'm like, that's like something that like for me, like sometimes I read this and I'm like, yeah, I would want the same thing back because I kind of think like a man sometimes. I'm not even going to lie. Right. Like I'm kind of like a little cold hearted when it comes to like 
relationships and stuff like that but we definitely want everybody to read this book if you know anybody going through it if you mm -hmm. know anybody dealing with a piece Put of crap a bow dude, on it and hand it to them yeah it is the bible it will mm -hmm. get you through some shit i agree is that all it? right i think that's a wrap well thank you guys for tuning in yes this we've been wanting to do this for a while we've been too, dying i love this book but all righty we'll see you next time bye, bye.